to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. In Psalm 8, verse 4, the psalmist asked one of those humbling questions ever been posed. What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? We hope you'll get your Bible and join us today as we look to the Word of God to answer this wonderful question. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. In Psalm chapter 8, verse 4, we find that compelling and ever humbling question that the psalmist asks, What is man? God, what is man that you care for him or the son of man that you look after him? And friend, as I think about this wonderful question, it humbles us to realize there is an answer in Scripture as to why God cares for me and for you. Why does He care for me? Why does He care for you? Why am I a big part and why are you a part of the thought of God? What is it about man that makes him special and unique from everything else that our God created? I want us to take just a moment and read the words of Psalm chapter 8 and then we're going to turn our attention to the Scripture to see why does God care for each and every one of us. What is it that is so unique about man? Listen to the words of Psalm chapter 8, beginning in verse number 1. The psalmist says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. And then he says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beast of the field and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. As we hear these humbling words, we're made to think about how awesome it is that God does care for us. But, but like the psalmist, sometimes the question is why? Why has God chosen 
to make man special. You know, the psalmist says, I can go out at night and I can look up at the, the moon and I can look at the marvelous canopy of the stars in the sky. And, and in view of that and how small I am, I'm made and I'm compelled to say, God, what is man? Why me? What is man that you're mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Let's let God's Word. I'm, I'm not capable because in view of all that God's made, we do feel small and insignificant until we look to the Word of God. What does the Word of God say about why the Creator of the universe chose to make man special? Why is it of all the things God created that man is the pinnacle climax of His creation? Here's what the Bible says. Why does God care so specially and uniquely about man? Man is the only creation made in the image of God. I want you to notice a couple of passages with me from the Scripture that, that clearly teach that man is special, that God uniquely cares for man because man is made in the image of God. Look at Genesis chapter 1, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in verse number 27. The Bible says, So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him, male and female. He created them. What, what makes me unique? Why does God care deeply for me? Why am I? Why is man in the thoughts of God? Because God made me in His own image. What does that mean? Genesis 2.7 helps us to understand a little bit. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, now watch this, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God created man with the Spirit, became a living soul. He is that which will live on as a part of uh, having a part of God in him. God breathed into the breath of life, made uniquely in the image of God. And so we're special because we're God's creation. God created us from himself, and there's a uniqueness that comes from that as well. This is why Peter would say in 1 Peter 5 7, cast all your cares upon the Lord. He cares for you. Friend, does it not encourage us? And does it not give us a sense of responsibility to know God created me and He created you in His own image? I'm unique because I am shaped and I'm fashioned, spiritually speaking, in the image of God. Secondly, as we ask and attempt to let the Scripture answer the question, what is man that you are mindful of him? Let's realize God, our God, is a loving Father. Why does God care for me? Because as His creation, God cares about us just as any father does his children. Jesus taught us to pray. In Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9, Our Father who art in heaven hallowed or holy is your name. If God truly is our Father, then He cares about us just as any father would His children that He so deeply loves and cares for. Imagine today, any father who has children. They're special. They're unique. They're a part of Him. They hold a special place in His heart. And He cares for them because of that. The Christian, the child of God, God's creation. We are His children. He cares about us because He's our Father. Listen to Hebrews chapter 12. And I want you to hear what the Bible says about this, beginning in verse number 9. Hebrews 12, 9 says, Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? God is the Father of my spirit. He's the Father of all spirits. He is the Creator of them. And God cares for me. What is man that you're mindful of Him? God is mindful of us just as a father is His children. What a beautiful picture that is. And again, there's a sense of awe and, and a sense of responsibility in that. I have the recognition from Scripture that God's my Father. 
that He created us, that He cares for us just as a father does His own son. If you've got children, you can surely understand this principle. Every father who's trying to live right and do right cares deeply and holds within his heart a special place for his children. Relate that to God. We're God's children. God's mindful of us just as a father is his son or daughter. Thirdly, as we attempt from Scripture to answer the question, what is man that you are mindful of him? Let's realize God cares for me and you because he wants us to spend eternity with him. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, Jesus there taught, the righteous will go away into eternal life and the unrighteous into eternal condemnation. The Bible says God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, God's not slow concerning His promises, as some men count slowness, but He's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why does God care for me? God wants us as His children. When we leave this life, He wants us to spend forever with Him. Now, friend, you talk about a loving, marvelous, magnificent God. That's the God whom we serve. How humbling and how, how much it creates awe in my heart to know that the God of heaven, although I have sinned, although I've done things that were contrary to His will, although I've stabbed God in the back on occasion, and we all have due to sin, God is mindful of me. He wants me to spend eternity in heaven, not hell, in heaven with Him. Friend, let's also realize as we ask the question and let the Word of God answer it. What is man that you're mindful of Him? Why does God care about me and you? God wants my happiness and He wants your happiness in this life. The Bible says in Psalm 1 beginning in verse number 1, Happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit, stands in the, in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. You read Jesus' address in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 5, about verses 1 through 12, every one of those is blessed or happy is those, are those who mourn, are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, are the peacekeepers. God gives us a perfect plan in this life for happiness. And, and in giving that, God shows He wants us to be happy and that He does deeply care about each and every one of us in this life. And so we think about, again, the idea of what is man. What am I? What are you? Friend, let's realize, I am and you are the pinnacle. We are the, the climax. We're the blockbuster creation of everything that God made. We're the pinnacle of what God made upon this earth. Uh, let me share with you a couple of scriptures that I think beautifully illustrate the idea that man is indeed the pinnacle, the very highest point in God's creation. Listen to Matthew chapter 6, and I want you to notice what Jesus says, beginning in verse number 21, showing that, that God does deeply care for each and every one of us. Matthew 6, 21, as Jesus talks about the subject of worry, here's what He says. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body be full of light. He goes on then a little later to talk about this subject. Look at Matthew 6, verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you'll put on it. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at verse number 31. Paul or Jesus says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? After all these things the Gentiles seek, here's the point, your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. In Genesis 2, you see the, the God creating man putting him in the garden, giving him everything to sustain him, to live happy and healthy and be spiritually minded. God made me and He made you the pinnacle of, our, of His creation. Yes, He made us a little lower than the angels, but friend, He made all of this to supplement man and to help man ultimately get to heaven where we could live in eternity with God. And so what a wonderful idea it is 
that I am made in the image of God and that I am and you are the pinnacle of His creation. When we say made in the image of God, uh, let's realize as we think about this idea that this is in God's spiritual image. When I hear the words of Genesis 1 verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image. You know, there's a beautiful idea to be obtained in that. Not only do we find that God is both the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the plurality there, but we also realize that God made me, and He made you in, the, in His spiritual image. Now, are we saying that physically, when God says, when the Bible says God made us in His image, and you see a physical appearance of someone, is that what God looks like? That's not the idea. Spiritually speaking, God made man in His image with a built-in desire to seek after God, to maybe seek after that which is holy, to want to worship, to want to please that which created Him. That's the ideas of being made in the image of God. Spiritually speaking, I have a soul that is going to live for somewhere, live somewhere after this life, and that should last for all eternity with God in heaven. Zechariah 12, verse 1, the Bible says it this way. We talk about being made in the image of God. The Bible says in Zechariah 12 verse 1 that God is the Father of our spirits. Spiritually speaking, God cares for me and He cares for you because in the image of Himself spiritually, God made man and what a wonderful, wonderful principle that in and of itself is. Now friend, let's also realize this. Every person that God created is a living spirit that will last beyond this life. Do you remember again Genesis 2 verse 7? The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being, or more correctly to the Hebrew there, a living soul. I'm a living spirit. I'm a living soul made in the image of Almighty God. The Bible says that, that, that my soul... I'm going to live within this body upon this earth and it is my one shot which is very temporary to get to heaven. The Bible says in James 4 verse 14, what is your life but a vapor? Here for a little while and then it vanishes away. The psalmist said I've got 70, maybe 80 years upon this earth if I'm lucky. Psalm 90 verses 10 through 12. And once I leave this earth, here's what the Word of God says. The Bible says that the Spirit of man the spirit returns to god who gave it it's in god's control it's within his power he has authority over my spirit and in your and yours and the bible tells us what will happen john 5 verse 28 jesus said all are in the graves will come forth those who have done good resurrection of life those who have done evil resurrection of condemnation as a living soul made in the image of God, God cares for me, and He's built within me the ability to know Him, to know the way of salvation, and to live for all eternity in heaven with Almighty God and all the saints of old. Now, let's, let's look at this from a different perspective. When we ask the question, what is man? We realize that man, at his truest self and truest nature, spiritually speaking, is made in the image of God. But friend, we also can't separate from the idea of that, that man is flesh. What is man that you're mindful of him? I'm also flesh and bones, that which is temporary and corruptible. Listen again to Genesis 2.7. The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7. And to the dust he shall return. And that spirit then returns to God who gave it. My life and yours is indeed very short. This old body, these bones, this facade that I now wear that houses my spirit, this tent, as Paul would say, is one day going to be put off. And therefore, I've got to make sure that while I'm in this tent, while I have this body, that I, I use it to the best of my ability to glorify God and to bring honor to Him in this life. Listen to what the Bible says about this idea of man being flesh. In Romans 7, beginning in verse 18, Paul says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, 
but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Part of my responsibility in this life is to control the flesh. I have the power to control it. I have the power to say no. I have the power to let my spirit and spiritual things control the flesh and carnal things, seek those things which are above. But friend, God knows that we are indeed flesh. He knows that man does have a temporary side and that being in this life. And you know, God cares for us and helps us through life in that sense. Now, let's think about this in another aspect. What is man? that makes the God of heaven care for him. Friend, if you've obeyed the gospel, and this is unique to the Christian, when we ask the question, what is man? He's a child of God. At the fullness of time, Paul said, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, that we may receive the adoption as sons. And since God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, we can call God our Father in essence. We have the the blessed privilege in this life. What is man? I'm a child of God. If I've obeyed the gospel, I'm God's child. I'm a direct heir of God. I am a, a Christian, and that is a wonderful thing in and of itself. In 1 John 3, verse 1, the Bible says these words. Behold, we talk about what is man and the all it ought to create in us. John says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we can be called children of God. You ever stopped and thought about how wonderful that is? What does it mean to say, when you bow your head in prayer and you say, Father in heaven, you ever thought about the awesome privilege of that? Behold what manner of love God has showered upon me and you that we can call him our Father. I'm a child of God. This is why Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 9, Pray, our Father who is in heaven. Here's another awe-inspiring idea. When we ask the question, what is man? Here's what we can definitely know. Man is a soul in need, in desperate need of God's grace and God's mercy. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What's man? He's a, he's a soul in need of the grace and mercy of God. John 1.17 tells us where that grace is. The law came through Moses. Grace and truth are in Christ Jesus. Titus 3 verse 5 says we are saved by the mercy of God. That mercy according to Lamentations 3 verses 20 through 22 is new every morning. That mercy that creates within us the joy and the hope that we have. Friend, let's also realize this. What is man that God cares for him? Let's realize man's not an island to himself and he cannot be independent from God. I cannot claim independence from the God who created me. I am completely dependent upon God and his need or his help that he desires to give us. Listen to what Hebrew writer said in Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6. The writer said, Let your life be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For the Lord himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, here's the idea, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? When I ask the question, what is man, I realize that I can't do it by myself. I need God. Man needs God and he needs to depend on God in this life. God's my helper. That causes me not to fear. I'm not worried about man. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 verse 16, Christians can say, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy to help in our time of need. And so man needs God desperately in this life to be what God wants him to be. Friend, along those lines, let's realize that man, when we ask the powerful question, what is man? Man is a soul preparing for eternity. That's why I'm here. That's what life is. You ever stop and thought about that? Why am I here? What's life all about? What did God put me on this earth for? I'm a soul preparing for eternity. Jesus asked these questions in Mark 8, verse 36 and 37. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world 
and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? A wise man once said in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. My responsibility, my purpose for being is to make sure I prepare my soul to live with God for eternity. That's why God created me. That's what man is, a soul in a temporary place right now which will shed this outward form and one day live somewhere for eternity. We mentioned these last two principles as we think about man's true nature. What is man? Man ought to be a light to the world and he ought to live his life to glorify God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Matthew 5 verse 16, we are told to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works. John chapter 8 verse 12, we ought to strive every day to, to glorify God in everything that we say and do. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31, whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. Now friend, let's come full circle and let's think about that humbling and that awe-inspiring question again. The psalmist said it so wonderfully. When I consider the moon and the stars and, and the works of your hand, every marvelous thing God has made, what is man that you're mindful of him or the son of man that you care for him? God made man special with a soul. God made man unique in that He put the breath of life into him and gave him a living soul. And God wants man to live with Him for eternity. Friend, if that's the case, we ask you and we ask ourselves, are we really living up to that awesome responsibility? If not, change our ways. Let's make sure we obey the gospel and let's live life in such a way that although we're humbled by God's amazing care for us, we respond by trying to live up to the awesome responsibility of being created in the image of Almighty God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.